So we're going to talk about my favorite compound in organic chemistry. It's not because I've ever worked with it. It's just that when I used to do organic chemistry, this was like the easy button on any type of synthetic scheme. I need a functionalized alkene. How do I do it? In bromosuccinide, because why not? They don't really check yields, do they? So in bromosuccinide, looks like this. And the nice thing about NBS is that it is a very good free radical maker. In fact, what it does is it breaks apart uh, the nitrogen bromine bond. Now, it's going to generate a free radical on our compound, and it's going to favor substitution at the more substituted allylic carbons. The allylic carbon is going to be the carbon nearest the double bond. So in this case, we would get bromine substitution here on this carbon. Now, ideally what we want to work with is something that has symmetry along the double bond because this is going to help us ensure that we're getting what we want. But what will happen is that first it will abstract a hydrogen. So it'll take off a hydrogen and create a radical. Now this radical ends up being stabilized because it can, this double bond can rotate back and forth to uh, either side of the double, to either carbon nearest the bond. But again, this is kind of why we want the symmetry around it, and we kind of want the same carbons around it, so this way we pretty much guarantee that we're getting what we want. But anyway, we create a radical, and then the bromine is going to attach to where that radical is. And it's very selective. It typically only does a single substitution and you're done. So this is why the NBS is so good. The NBS is going to ensure that you only put one bromine right next to your carbon double bond. On the one of the allylic carbons, really good, really selective, and really easy to work with.